It's like you told me, go for it slowly. It's not a race till the end. Well, you look like yourself, but you're somebody else. Only it ain't on the surface. Well, you talk like yourself. No, I hear someone else. Don't Rick Alexander, and I host the Morning Coffee Podcast. You guys are listening to it right now. That introduction music was by Brittany Taylor, and she's at Brittany Taylor with two T's and two E's on Instagram. If you guys want to interact with me, if you want to interact with her, best place to do that is probably Instagram, honestly, as I've said before. A lot of my business I do in the DMs these days, and although that's crazy, that is the 21st century, and I'm a millennial, so here we are. I wanted to tackle a question today that is going to be difficult for me. And uh, I'm going to tackle it in a way that asks a lot of questions and probably doesn't take a hard line on things. Because one of the things that I've realized in my journey for deeper wisdom or hidden truth, you could say, is that the most true thing I know is that you always have to leave room for what you don't understand. And so if you become super dogmatic of your beliefs, well, you, you have to understand human awareness is so finite. You're, you could be leaving out a lot of things. And so if you are dogmatic in your beliefs and then you start running into trouble in your lives, which people do around 30 years or so into their lives, they start realizing like anxiety starts creeping in. Shit's not the same as it used to be. You've known more people that have died now and that's kind of weird. And on top of that, things have not worked out like you thought they were going to probably many different times. And so in, in the midst of that turmoil that happens two or three decades into our lives, well, we run into the existential crisis, right? And that's when we have the midlife crisis or the quarter life crisis. But beyond that, things just become less vibrant because we're so aware. We, we become a little bit cynical because we, we're so aware of what could not work out and what could go wrong. And I felt this in my own life a lot. And so one of the things that happens is as you have things not work out, Again, you have to be careful about dogmatic belief because what you need to know might be outside of what you believe to be true. And that's a problem. Well, it'll be a problem for you for the rest of your life unless you start to leave room for the fact that there's a lot of things that you might not know. Well, one of the things that happens in two or three decades into this life is that you understand that you've been programmed a certain way and that not all of that programming and patterning is actually helpful. And then what happens sometimes is we just try to head in the opposite direction because we're like, well, that isn't right anymore, so I'm going the opposite way. And so we see that with religion a lot. Sometimes people grow up religious, and then they get to a point where like, well, that doesn't really make sense. And then they head the opposite direction, and they're like, no, I don't want anything. But of course, one of the things we know is that humans have a huge spiritual side. And so if you ignore that side in yourself, it's probably going to be to your detriment, at least after a while. And then the thing that happens is we see people tend to turn around and they come back to it. Well, that's fine. If that's your process. But one of the things that I'd like to draw your attention to is when you have things that aren't working out in your life and things aren't necessarily going the way that you want them to, maybe what you have to do isn't just reject or go back to your programming. Maybe you need to throw the playbook out altogether and just recapitulate your idea about what it means to be a human in the world. And that is super uncomfortable. But you have to understand that your parents programmed you for the world that they grew up in and you don't live in that world anymore. Right? You have a you live in a completely different world. You live in a world where someone can turn on their computer and be a radio DJ the next day. It's a very different world that you're dealing with. So you have to get rid of some of your programming that's not serving you, or you have to recapitulate your ideas about what's right and what's okay. So the question that I wanted to ask you today or that I wanted to explore today with you is how do we differentiate between a calling of the heart and just a deeply ingrained pattern? And I am intimately familiar with this. So the first thing that I want to say, though, is that and if you are religious, this actually might make a little bit more sense to you. But there's an assumption that we're all making in this life. And that is that we all have that we are as humans aligned with what is right. Right. And, and that's the assumption that we all make. And so somehow throughout the course of our lives, we are on some kind of journey that is aligned with what's right. And so we are evolving in the right direction or we are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to fight right? You could never fight for something if you didn't know what was right or wrong. And, you know, of course, that happens to be a problem with a lot of people that end up fighting for things and then find out that they were wrong. The question to ask yourself, if you're thinking about doing something and you're wondering, is this coming from my heart? Is this what I really believe? Or have I been programmed to believe this? Then the question to ask yourself is whatever it is you're thinking about doing, what are the repercussions if you don't? 
See, because here's the truth about our life is that everything is going to be made in fear or love. And if you can make decisions in love, then you're aligned with truth, you're aligned with what's right, and it's completely okay. But there's no repercussions, right? Because love isn't conditional. And so that's what matters. Like there's no, there's anytime love is conditional, it's not actually love. You're no longer talking about love. You're talking about something else. And so that's why sometimes when I'm talking to people and I'm going through these sort of coaching scenarios with them about big decisions that they want to make, especially when we're dealing with the Clarity Academy and stuff, one of the things that I say is, well, like, look, you can't make the wrong decision. I've made a ton of wrong decisions in my life that didn't turn out to be wrong. Everything worked out, you know, and and it doesn't if it hasn't worked out, it's because it hasn't worked out yet. You're still in the storm. That's not the time to turn around. But if you find that you're coerced into doing something or you feel like you have to do something because of some kind of repercussion, then it's most likely that that isn't aligned with what's actually right. Because if we're aligned with what's right, then it makes no sense to operate out of fear. And I think what you're starting to see as a evolution of consciousness with humanity as a whole is that we're stepping further away from fear programming and stepping further toward truth, light, and love. And that that's actually just my understanding of this sort of consciousness expansion or revolution that's happening right now. But within your own life, as things don't work out, you're going to deal with the fallout. And sometimes you're going to want to deal with it a certain way, but you're going to bounce off your belief system because you've, you've been taught to believe a certain thing about what happens when things don't work out, or you've been taught to believe a certain thing about what happens when you fail. Or, and the question to ask yourself is, one, why do I believe that's true? right? And then the second question is, what is the repercussion if I don't do this? If the repercussion is just you feeling like, damn, I could have made an impact there, then maybe you want to do it. But that's not fear. That's just knowing the best way that you can make an impact in the world. And so just asking that one question, I think, can really help change the way that you're thinking about things and the way that things are happening in your life. Listen, the last part of this is as you try to dispense with old programming, it is going to be a bitch. And I don't think anyone talks about that because people don't have a really good grasp on what it really means. And I think that's because a lot of times the growth that we do have is sort of inner ego growth. So we grow in certain ways, but we're not completely open to growing in whatever ways our calling is actually asking us to be to grow in. And that's a completely different kind of growth altogether. Um, and I think people, when they get in that, it's, it's a little bit destabilizing because your foundational system and your programming is being pulled from you. And so when you're in these things of turmoil and you're sort of caught in it, the first thing you can ask yourself is, am I doing this for pleasure or joy? So existential crisis, midlife crisis, quarter life crisis, a lot of pleasure seeking, but not much joy, right? And you know it's pleasure because it never actually gives you what it promises to give you before you get it. And that's a new car a new girlfriend or boyfriend, like a new haircut, new anything like that is a pleasurable activity and you can use them to make your days better. And so what you want to do is find the activities that create joy in your life. And if you're creating joy, there's probably no presence of fear whatsoever. Uh, but tough one to walk through today, uh, tough one to walk through in your own life. But think about the thing that you want to do. Ask yourself, what are the repercussions if you don't? And then you'll know if that thing is coming from your calling from your heart or if it's coming from past programming love you guys talk tomorrow on morning coffee Fear and love. sometimes people tend to mix it up tell me which side are you standing on you can complicate it all you want I am anointing the skin, the flower braid in your hair, your tongue is wet to the wind, and if the water is clean, that's a good place to begin, to wash away all the fear, and let the laughter back in. So tell me, what are you running from? If we don't stop, it goes on and on. So tell me, what are you running from? Cause in the end, it's only fear and love. Sometimes people tend to mix it up. Tell me which side are you standing on? You can complicate it all you want. But in the end, it's only fear and love. Yeah, I'm just out here 
you're catching feelings, man, I'm feeling right. Sexual healing in that morning, yeah, that's all of mine. Sometimes I lose my sight, sometimes that dice ain't rolling right, that's life. Yeah, that's good times, that's Jamie Walker, that's dynamite, yeah. So tell me, what are you running from? If we don't stop, it goes on and on. So tell me, what are you running from? Cause in the end, it's only fear in love. Sometimes people tend to mix it up. Tell me which side are you standing on? You can complicate it all you want. But in the end, it's only fear in love. Sometimes people tend to mix it up. Tell me which side.